All right, so this is a suggestion via Patreon. The name of the video is The Impact of the Migrant Crisis on the 2024 Elections. Go check it out. The growing migrant crisis here in New York City may put new pressure on President Joe Biden's re-election bid when it comes to big-time fundraising. The situation has some people riled up throughout the city and across New York State. On Friday, the Congressional Hispanic Caucus came here to see the situation for themselves, but they were drowned out by anti-migrant protesters. Here's NBC New York's well, Erica Byfield with more. It? What does that say? Do you Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez struggled to make her point amid all that chanting after she and Representative Adriano Espaillat led members of the Congressional Hispanic Caucus through a tour of the Roosevelt Hotel, a location housing hundreds of asylum seekers. Like, guys, it's absolutely different for the, the politicians to just be like, yeah, I'm just going to do my politician thing and, and try to fundraise for whichever party I'm affiliated with, et cetera, et cetera. Right. But the problem here is, is that the people who may have at one time voted you in are now sick and tired of your nonsense right so you cannot expect for these people to vote you back in next year all right so if new york just got absolutely obliterated okay by the migrant crisis do you really think that they want to hear any either of you guys right now right talking about the benefits of the migrancies migrant crisis because how dare you okay you don't even live here anymore all right, let's, let's let's go. What we saw where were children, families, people that want to work, people that are fleeing violence, people that are fleeing uh, environmental disasters. There were no cameras allowed inside, but News 4 saw the living conditions firsthand a few weeks ago. Outside, all that shouting from the sidelines came from people frustrated with New York's status as a sanctuary city. Within the last year, 100,000 migrants crossed the southern border, relocating to New York's city. The city is still providing services to 60,000 people. These people are cutting the line and as long as you continue to grant them free stuff, you're never going to stop the crisis at the border. For nope. months now, the mayor nope. and governor nope. have nope. said coming. that the situation is unsustainable and the migrants must get approval to work to support themselves. The Guys, keep in mind the, the current mayor, uh, um, Eric Adams, he's like, listen, bro, we're going to have to cancel right to shelter because this is not working. People are coming to New York, hearing about us now all over the world to the point where you have people from the Middle East coming into uh, the southern border. You have people from Turkey. You have people from, from China. You have, you have West people from West Africa coming. These places don't border us. All right? You have all these individuals coming. Uh, for what reason? exactly what states like New York are, are basically giving to them. Okay, it's ridiculous now. The people that are yelling in the background actually have to deal with this every single day while the politicians are running straight to either Albany, where there are no migrants, or Washington, D.C. ...is unsustainable, and the migrants must get approval to work to support themselves. The lawmakers from California, Texas, Illinois, New Jersey, and New York all agreed. They are prevented from getting jobs, they are prevented from employment, and that is part of the strain on our public system. For now, President Biden is not budging on work authorization, adding to the tension. Members of his administration question why New York's leaders don't have an exit strategy. The lawmakers avoided addressing that. Instead, they said. We need everyone to collaborate to make sure we are dealing with the issue properly. Get off of me. Okay. Friday's gathering did create a little drama out front, but the police broke it up. While the migrants at the center of the debate looked on. In Spanish, a 24-year-old mother told us we didn't come here to take away anything from anyone. Yeah, but the problem is that the overwhelming majority of, of impoverished people living in New York uh, are not getting the same benefits you are getting. That's causing this rift. Joining me to discuss NBC Homeland Security correspondent Julia Ainsley and Zachary Iskell, emergency management commissioner here in New York City. Commissioner, our Democratic mayor, Eric Adams, says caring for these migrants over the next three years will cost 12 billion dollars. He is urging the White House, the federal government, for help. You are in the middle of all of this. What can you tell us? Yeah. 
So first off, thanks for having me on today. It's great to see you, and thanks for covering this important story. Um, so the city over the past year, year plus, has been dealing with a national crisis. This is not just a crisis in New York City. I talk to my counterparts across the country. Uh, this is affecting a lot of places other than New York. But in New York City, we have now cared for over 113,000 asylum seekers. We currently have 60,000 people in our care. And this is a crisis that demands a national response. It's not right just to put this on the shoulders of cities and municipalities around the country. Historically, in the in U.S., words, when we have had situations of forced migration, yeah. we've always had a national federal response. And it's been almost a, when you look back on history, a, a bright point in, in, in American history. Yeah. Why do you think things are different this time? I don't know, but it's a great, it's a great point. I mean, if you go back to World War II and you look at the history of forced migration in this country and you look at uh, European refugees, 1.8 million after World War II with President Truman. You look at Soviet Jews in the 80s, people like Sergei Brin. You look at Vietnamese boat people, refugees in the 70s, Cuban uh, boat refugees in 79 and 80, Haitians. Every single time the federal government has run a process and a response that was really an investment that paid huge dividends to American society and to the American economy. And right now, uh, I don't know why the administration is absent, but they are not uh, actively leading on this issue, and they are leaving it to local places like New York and others to handle this on their own. And that's going to be the, honestly, one of the, should be one of the main talking points come this election uh, coming up. That should be the, one of the, the first thing we should be getting answers to. Bro, what are you trying to do? If you're not trying to do nothing, get out of the White House, bro. Pack it up. Julia, you just reported that illegal boarding crossings have been going up this month. We know Congress isn't going to do anything. We know that Nothing. the administration is taking action. They are on the border. But what are they doing more comprehensively here? We've got all of these cities like New York saying, please help us. We need a federal response. Well, look, there's a lot of finger pointing going back and forth. I was just outside the Roosevelt Hotel during those protests on Friday. But from here in Washington, I can tell you the officials at DHS I've spoken to are saying that they want to see the city do more to get this issue under control. Some sources saying that it's not an operationally sound effort. They point to the fact that they've given or at least allocated $140 million to New York City and That's over enough. 700, almost $800 million to cities across the border and in the interior okay. of the U.S. who have absorbed a lot of these migrants. They're also working on finalizing uh, a deal that would allow them to lease out part of a field in southeast Brooklyn and airplane hangars where they could shelter 800 migrants. They have ways they're trying to use resources of the federal government. They also sent an assessment team to New York where they looked at how this operation is being run and said they need to do more for case management and to tell which migrants if they do, if they are eligible for work authorization, make sure they know that they started a text message program. Now, I'm giving you all the bullet points. This okay. is what they would tell you if you had a federal official on here right. telling you this. But right. the reality on the ground is it might be too little, too late. This is it's it's too little, too late. It's almost at a point where it's irrelevant. It's literally nothing. The amount of money that they're even spending is at 800 million for all of the cities. New York City is going to spend twelve billion in the next three years. You're talking about buying a field to to house eight hundred of the what over one hundred thousand migrants, and still what ten thousand are roughly coming in every time you check your clock. Basically, guys, um, it's nearly impossible to uh, uh, to help anything now. All right, it's it's done. Right, it's almost as if New York has fallen. Uh, it's, it's nothing but a shell of what it once used to be. What I mean by this is if you spend $12 billion just specifically in Manhattan on the migrant crisis, that means that all of the things that your kids specifically love in Manhattan or around any of the boroughs, guys, that's all gone, right? All those after school, those free after school programs, um, you know, the teachers getting, getting uh, raises, uh, all of the parks opening, bro. There's so many things that are going to be negatively affected if you have to divert $12 billion of income specifically to this one, one, one cause. 
and not really for anything else in the city. It's absolutely abysmal that this is happening. It's been going on for uh, since spring of 2022. As your guest just mentioned, they've seen 113,000 migrants come through this city. I spent time in their hospital system last week. This is inundating them. This is overwhelming them. And it's getting to a point where New Yorkers see it in their everyday. I saw children there coming through the trash, trying to get bottles that they could sell for money because they're so desperate for a way to support themselves. So I think it's something to watch here, how New York handles this, how the federal government handles the, what New York is doing, whether or not they take leadership, and how the sentiment on migrants might be changing even among some progressives yeah. or people who maybe previously were sympathetic or apathetic uh -huh. toward right. migrants, how bringing this number it's of migrants done. into American cities might change the way some people view what's happening at the border. Which Ooh, state guys, important statement that she just made here. And the reason being is, is that, yeah, that's, she's talking about me, right? I am someone that has traveled the world. I've immigrated into, into three countries. Um, the last one was uh, Spain, okay? Uh, where my wife is from Spain, immigrated her to the United States of America. Everything has been legal, all these other things, right? Um, I have always been like, bro, I don't care. Let them come in, you know? Uh, why not? It's, it's good for everything, I would say, right? And now with the sheer amount of people that have flooded the borders, I'm done with that. We're not having this conversation anymore. You lost me, okay? You, in fact, lost me. It's gone. It's over. All right. Then with the, the jails basically being raided in Venezuela and all these people being released, they're coming to New York. You have Trende Aragua. Um, basically, somehow that's in Manhattan now. I don't understand that. Right. Um, and you have all these individuals that were once in that prison that was that was basically you know, freed for, for some reason. Right. Um, it's making all these places excessively unsafe, not at all saying that every single one of these individuals are committing all these crimes. They're not, right? It's a small section of them, but they're committing such atrocities that it's it, it, it's everywhere now, okay? Um, you have MS-13 coming through the southern border also at a, at a crazier rate to the point where every single state of ours itself has some type of MS-13 uh, like subgroup in there, guys. It's absolutely nuts. Okay, we have state, we have countries that don't border us. We're getting their migrants. It's you know, me to my next yeah. question. Can I just for you? comment on one yes, thing about please. this really quickly? Uh, I've seen real heroism in my life. I fought in the Battle of Fallujah. I was in the Iraq War. Every single day, I could not be prouder of the work that the city has been doing over the past year. It is absolutely remarkable. Housing now, currently 60,000 people, 20% of them children. That's more people than you could fit in Yankee Stadium. That's more kids than you could fit in Madison Square Garden. This is a lot of people that we're caring for every single day. And in emergency management, I just want to make this one point. In emergency management, emergency management 101, when the local jurisdiction is no longer able to handle an emergency, you're supposed to be able to turn to the state and the federal government for help. That's that's written into federal right, law right. with the Stafford Act right. and, and, and into, you know, you can see the history of, of emergencies and the way that this is the way it's supposed to respond. Of course. We have been turning around now for over a year looking for help from the state, looking for help from the federal government, and they're just not there. And there's a lot of finger lot pointing. Of there's a lot of blame, as Julia just said. But what we really need is partnership. We need solutions. And we need real leadership coming from Washington. Here's also the... We, we need real leadership coming from Washington. Bro, Biden's, Biden's going to be gone. The, the dangerous Watch line us. that I want to talk about, because Watch Julia us. was just talking about sentiment from a lot of people who are sympathetic to migrants or maybe were apathetic in the past. We're at a place where so many of these people want to work want to pay taxes that if they don't get processed well we end up seeing a lot of these folks in the underground economy which would be terrible for everyone so you're already seeing it so a lot of people are currently working the informal economy and i will tell you having spent a lot of time with the people in our care um all of them number one thing they want to do is work they all have a, and we a have loved jobs. one and we have jobs we have 10,000 homemade jobs in this in this state alone. We have 30,000 hospitality jobs, 5,000 agricultural jobs upstate. There's a lot of jobs that could be filled in New York State alone, let alone across the country. But the folks that I spend time with in our care, all of them have loved ones back home. It could be an aging parent. It could be a special needs child that they want to support. And they will do anything they can to support those folks. And so it is critically important that not only for them, but for ourselves, that we make these investments, get them to work, and do the right thing by the people okay. in our care.
It will be good for our economy. It will be good for society. It will be good for culture. What we need to do is find a comprehensive solution. All right, so the, this guy here just said a whole lot while while openly admitting that the country, the people that are coming from these countries are looking for some type of remittance, basically to be to subsidize the whatever economy that they're actually coming from by sending money from the United States of America uh, to their country that they just tried to escape from, right? By saying that they're here for asylum, but in all actuality, it's really just economic migrancy, and it's really for the exclusive purpose of remittance, right? They are looking to, in fact, subsidize the country's shortcomings financially uh, with the United States of America. That's what he just said, his words. Um, but either way, um, I do think that um, probably the most intelligent way to do it would be the H-1B visas, guys. Um, and I mean that thoroughly, guys. That's that's the way to go. Um, people need to stop specifically saying that they're asylum seekers because it's, it's basically, uh, it, it doesn't make any sense that you're, you're, you're attempting to claim asylum when you're really just here for economic purposes, right? It doesn't make any sense. I think that's one of my, my, my main gripes here. Um, I mentioned uh, I think a couple of days ago in a video uh, kind of regarding the H-1B visa, how that would make all the sense in the world, um, is yeah, he's right. There are a lot of jobs across the nation that absolutely would love to have a lot more people. It would, it would help a lot in like smaller economies around the United States of America. What, so what I mean here is basically set up um, like employment agencies in countries where you see the mo that most of these people are coming from. Okay, set up an employment agency, uh, hire people for H-1B visas, like 90 days. They can work, uh, do something agriculture related or, or whatever you can, you know, you can hire someone from a foreign country for, uh, for a 90 day or maybe a 180 day purpose or something like that. Um, that would be completely fine. I would back it. I don't, I have no issues with, 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 uh, the concept of immigration. Again, I've immigrated multiple times to multiple different countries. Um, that's, I'm not one of those immigrant dislikers guys that's not me um but um the h1b visa uh, would be amazing to set up and to have people actually have access to rather than just claiming asylum consistently and then us having to basically foot their bill completely when a company could basically go to some random employment agency in a random country and say, hey, I need 50 people for 180 days during this season. We're going to give them the H-1B visa, pay for travel and lodging. The company pays, not the United States government. Okay. Um, we are a capitalist nation, right? So I'm sure all of you guys would, would most likely agree with that same that same sentiment here. The H-1B visa allows people to come from another country and, and work for an American company for a set amount of time, and then they go back to their country. Right? Um, that's how I think a solution absolutely uh, would make sense, at least, right? Um, the concept of asylum seeking doesn't make sense as it stands currently. But all right. Listen, you guys all have an absolutely amazing day. Let me know what you guys think of my theory here. Um, an employment agency, let's say in Venezuela, that can pull people, 50 or 100 people, however many people they need, right? Um, for a set amount of time for them to make money uh, and then go back to Venezuela. That's it. Just just a thought, guys. Right? But all right, listen, you guys all have an absolutely amazing day. Enjoy your day uh, thoroughly. Guys, before we go, are you guys subscribed to the other channels? Logical Movie Reviews with Mr. L. Boyd along with Mr. L. Boyd Music. Both are found in the description. Check it out.